Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about dinosaurs. But more specifically, we're actually going to discuss the idea of their demise, the extinction of dinosaurs, and some of the recent studies that discovered, well, that it really happened because of an asteroid, a collision that happened about 66 million years ago. But I also wanted to discuss some of the recent research that established everything about this particular event, including what may have happened to various locations on Earth when the collision occurred, because there has been some really groundbreaking research in regards to dinosaurs vanishing from planet Earth. But first of all, why do we even question the idea of the demise of dinosaurs from an asteroid collision? Well, up until early 90s, the scientists thought that the dinosaurs disappeared because of a major volcanic eruption that happened in the same region where we currently have India. It's this huge purple spot that you see right here. This whole spot used to be a very large volcanic shield. This is the region known as the Deccan Traps, and this actually occurred around 66 million years ago as well. And because we have a lot of evidence that volcanoes can easily change the climate of the planet really suddenly, a huge volcano like that would definitely change the climate of the planet quite dramatically. We have a really good example of a volcano that erupted in the Philippines a few decades ago that lowered the temperature of the planet by about half a degree for at least a year. But in the 90s, the scientists made a revolutionary discovery. An asteroid crater that was really, really huge, located on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, that was created around the same time when the dinosaurs perished. At the same time, the discoveries of the iridium layer around the planet, which in this image is this relatively thick layer you see right here, has been discovered in various places around the planet and would only be really deposited by something coming from the outer space, in this case an asteroid. And so in the 90s, the scientists were pretty convinced that it was actually an asteroid and not the volcanoes. But this didn't really stop some other scientists from arguing for decades, and at the same time, there was still quite a lot of evidence suggesting that maybe dinosaurs actually started perishing even before the asteroid hit the planet. But that's of course until some of the recent discoveries and some of the recent studies. The most recent study was investigating this crater right here, and was actually able to collect the deposits that you can see right here that were extracted from within the crater itself, really really deep in the ground. And by looking at these deposits right in the crater, they found once again the signs of iridium, and here it was actually really high concentrations of iridium, covered by a lot of different sediment. And specifically a mixture of ash and ocean sediment that essentially was deposited in this location for approximately a few decades afterwards. And this of course sort of makes sense because when an asteroid strikes a planet, and this is based on simulations you can find in the description below, this one specifically was created by Gareth Collins from Imperial College London, you can sort of see how the explosion returns a lot of the deposits into the original location, and eventually as all of this settles, this will obviously create very very thick layers of both impact and ocean sediments, which essentially created this really thick layer that the scientists discovered in their samples. And because of this very very thin layer of iridium in there, this allowed the scientists to quite precisely establish exactly when the collision happened, but also allowed them to see how quickly all of this recovered afterwards. As a matter of fact, one of the interesting discoveries in one of the recent papers is how quickly the life recovered, or the primitive life recovered, after the collision occurred. They even found bacterial cultures present in the sediment. But even though bacterial life was doing really well, all of the other complex life, including of course the dinosaurs, seems to have perished within about a decade after the collision. Now it's not entirely clear what was the biggest sort of influence on their demise, but chances are it was either starvation or maybe they suffocated or possibly a bit of both. All of this dust released by the explosion and all of the sediments now circulating in the atmosphere most likely dramatically lowered the temperatures on the planet and also prevented a lot of the sunlight from getting through for at least a decade, possibly even a couple of decades. Which would obviously create conditions where a lot of these large animals would suddenly have nothing to eat and would basically starve. And one really interesting discovery here was the absence of sulfur in the rocks where the crater was located, even though there was a lot of sulfur around the area on Yucatan Peninsula. This only implied that all of the sulfur must have evaporated and was suddenly added to the atmosphere. Now, if you know anything about sulfur, this is basically what causes acid rain 
and is also usually the gas responsible for the dramatic cooling of the atmosphere, which would very likely lead to some sort of a global winter with a lot of really, really acidic rain on top of that. But the more fascinating discoveries are actually in regards to some of the local effects. So obviously such an explosion would produce a tremendous amount of damage. The tsunami here was insane, the amount of earthquakes and amount of shaking was also extreme, and a lot of the evidence is actually visible in some of the sediments we find today. So going back to that sample of sediment that I showed you before, it turns out that roughly around 425 feet or about 130 meters of sediment was literally deposited pretty much overnight. All of this was a kind of a backwash of all of this material suddenly returning back to the same location where the asteroid strike occurred. And because this is such a huge accumulation of material so quickly, it literally creates this opportunity for scientists to learn everything about that day when the dinosaurs perished. So there are definitely going to be so many new studies coming out, analyzing the sediment, discovering a lot of new things afterwards. And then there are also signs of a massive tsunami. Something that is just mind-boggling and something that's almost impossible to imagine. Apparently, the science suggests that the tsunami reached as far as Chicago, Illinois. And that means that the tsunami that started right here managed to make its way all the way here across the North America, depositing a lot of sediments in the process. And although the asteroid itself was roughly around 6 miles or maybe about 9 kilometers across, it managed to create a crater that was at least 18 miles or 27 kilometers deep. At the same time, releasing about 25 trillion tons of material into the atmosphere almost instantly, which is about 10,000 times more material than the most powerful volcano of the past few centuries, the volcano known as Krokatoa. And that volcano was able to lower the temperature of planet Earth by at least 1 degree for about 5 years or so which also very likely created a really large explosion, although maybe not as large as you see here, possibly a little bit smaller, which set fire to everything within thousands and thousands of kilometers, with some of the debris even making its way all the way to Mars, where we can probably even find some of these rocks there today, just in the same way that we find Martian rocks here on planet Earth. There are even suggestions that some of these rocks may have made their way to objects like Titan, with some rocks possibly even containing bacterial life on the inside, and if they made their way to Titan, there is actually a chance some of this bacterial life could have survived and possibly even evolved to thrive over time. This was of course 65 million years ago, so we can't really know this for sure, but chances are still there, especially because one of the recent experiments determined that bacteria can definitely survive in outer space for up to about 3 years. And following all of this, following the explosion, the tsunami, the sudden decrease in temperature, that's when possibly a lot of photosynthetic life started to perish as well. And without photosynthetic life, the carbon cycle collapses and larger organisms also perish. And this is when about 99.99% .99 of everything on the planet started to die out, which lasted for a couple of decades. And so the fact that the collision happened and that it had a dramatic effect on the planet is now almost certainly a fact. But how do we know that the dinosaurs perished though? Because there is actually something known as the 3 meter problem. It refers to this idea that about 3 meters of deposits right before the impact seem to actually lack dinosaur remains. And so for many years scientists have been struggling to find clues or proof that the dinosaurs indeed were still around when the asteroid strike occurred. And well, looks like we might have some clues coming from the location known as Hell Creek, a really, really famous place in the US located right around here. This is actually a formation that's famous for a lot of different discoveries of a lot of different dinosaurs. And this is, as a matter of fact, where the first T-Rex was discovered as well. But it's also a relatively secretive site because a lot of um, archaeologists working in this area realized over time that a lot of these samples are pretty much priceless. And because there are so many people trying to purchase dinosaur bones or even other materials that are present here, it has become a more or less secretive location where not a lot of things are disclosed right away until they are discovered, analyzed, and until a paper is written about them. But one of the main reasons this particular site is so interesting and so unusually rich in everything is because it seems to contain this one region where everything was deposited all at once, including various types of dinosaur bones, including various fish, 
and it's all in one single place. But what's even more unusual is that it seems to contain species of freshwater fish, seawater fish, and dinosaurs, along with obviously plants and a lot of other matter. And that is what makes this particular site extremely interesting, because that's basically possibly the signs of that tsunami depositing everything at once. Although this is where it gets even more intriguing and even more interesting, because it actually helps us understand how these asteroids affect the planet. Now there was actually a really cool press release about all of this a couple of years ago, where it talks about this researcher uh, by the name of Robert De Palma, who you can actually see right here in this picture, who essentially worked on this site for many many years and discovered a lot of really amazing things. For example, he identified one of the coolest looking raptor-like dinosaurs, today known as the Dakota Raptor, which was the largest representative of this particular species of dinosaurs. And by the way, for those of you who love Jurassic Park, this would have been such a better fit for the movie. Because the actual velociraptors, as you can see, were really, really tiny. And so, by working at this site for many years, De Palma and a few other researchers discovered a lot of really amazing things. As I mentioned, they discovered different types of fish, they discovered dinosaur bones, but more importantly, they actually started to discover these really tiny pieces of glass known as microtectites. Tiny pieces that can only be formed when a lot of molten rock is blasted into the air and then slowly falls onto the ground. And the region where they were digging for those samples had a lot of these microtectites everywhere. But these microtectites were also obviously mixed with the samples from dinosaurs, from fish, and from everything else they were discovering. They apparently even discovered a bunch of feathers and remnants from ancient mammalian species. Although some of the fish they discovered were actually vertical, and a lot of them seemed to have their mouth open as if they perished suffocating. All of this basically suggested that all of this matter was suddenly deposited all at once as if a huge wave of sediment, probably created by some kind of a wave, suddenly rushed in and put it all in the same place, with a lot of fish finding itself inside the sediment unable to breathe. And by the way, those feathers were also very likely from the Dakota Raptor as well. And because this was such a rich site, they actually named it Tanis, after the Egyptian city known as Tanis, which has become one of the most important archaeological sites of the past few centuries, and has also been featured in the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Indiana Jones was trying to recover the legendary Ark of the Covenant. So this is definitely a really, really important site, at least for the scientists studying exactly what happened to the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. But some of the recent studies actually identified one major problem with this particular discovery. A tsunami could not have brought all of those samples all at once, while also delivering all of the microtectites. And the reasoning here is, well, it's really simple. These microtectites that will be released from the explosion and are going to be landing all over the planet would really not take that long, possibly an hour maximum. But a massive tsunami with a lot of sediment on the inside would definitely take a few hours to arrive there, so there is no way that the sediment and the microtectites would be mixed together. Yet interestingly, the signs of the wave, the tsunami, are still there, still present in this location. And the wave itself is much larger than anticipated. And the explanation for all of this actually comes from something that happened not so long ago. The event that happened back in 2011 in Japan, the extremely powerful Tohoku earthquake. There are a few articles out there that explain this, and I'm going to post one of them in the description below. But in a nutshell, about 30 minutes after the earthquake happened, all the way in Norway, in one of the really calm fjords that usually have absolutely no waves at all, there were suddenly these 5 foot waves happening all over the place. Waves that are usually referred to as the sage waves. These types of waves are produced in different bodies of water when there are several different disturbances present at the same time. In this case, you can see these disturbances in blue and red, and the final standing wave being produced in black. These repeated reflections will often produce these very large standing waves, depending on how powerful those initial disturbances are. And in this case, we're talking about a disturbance of massive proportions we're talking about an asteroid strike. This would produce so many different vibrations and so many extremely powerful waves going all over the planet that the sage waves in various lakes and various seas on the planet would be enormous, tsunami-sized. Now, if the Tohoku earthquake was producing 5 feet waves, an asteroid strike could easily produce sage waves in possibly up to 100 feet in height. 
And those were probably the waves that eventually deposited all of the fish and all of the other sediments onto the location here. And with all of the initial sediments already deposited, that's when all these microtectites started landing and mixing with the first layer of sediment. And then hours later, that's when the rest of the sediments came in. But interestingly, this particular location represents what seems to be minutes or possibly about an hour, maybe two hours after the initial strike. And so by studying whatever we discover in this location, the scientists can learn so much about everything that happened to dinosaurs and all of the other species on the planet. More importantly, it can also help us understand what really happens to the planet when a massive asteroid strikes. So obviously these sage waves are a really big discovery here, but there were definitely so many other effects. There were effects from the sulfurous, there were effects from a lot of other greenhouse gases released at the same time, and there were also definitely effects from carbon dioxide, which very likely turned all of the oceans to acidic almost instantly. Altogether, this definitely created a very toxic planet for all of these organisms pretty much in a single day. All of which is an important piece of evidence suggesting that the dinosaurs very likely or almost certainly disappeared because of the asteroid strike, not really because of the volcanoes. And I guess, well, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this super long video. Now, there are actually a lot of articles I provided in the description where you can find even more information about all of this and several studies that I mentioned briefly in this video. Also, a lot of these wonderful dinosaur videos were created by this really talented artist, Julian Johnson Mortimer, who gave me permission to use them for this video. Check out his YouTube channel, he is absolutely amazing in creating a lot of dinosaur media. And well, before I finish this video, I also wanted to mention one really important fact. It's based on this paper from 1991. The paper discussing the original discovery of the crater in Mexico. Now, after this paper was written, the main author became an extremely important proponent of the concept known as planetary defense. Essentially, he started to talk about how we need to find ways to prevent this from ever happening while we are around. And this is, of course, something that, well, first of all, a lot of movies are based on, but second of all, we still don't really have a good solution to. There's still just not enough interest and not enough resources to create a technique to either divert these asteroids from colliding with planet Earth or to even detect them early. Some of them still have a chance to sneak up on planet Earth and maybe even collide with it. And that is obviously something we need to be aware of and something that we need to constantly become better at. Being able to detect these asteroids and also being able to somehow redirect them. But that's something we're going to talk about in one of the future videos. On that note, well, thank you so much for watching. Check out some of the other videos I made on the topic. And also check out all of the studies and all of the relevant links in the description below. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot or by joining the channel memberships or possibly buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And well, looks like I just possibly created yet another collision in a very similar location to the uh, creator in Mexico. Anyway, on that note, subscribe, share this with someone who loves dinosaurs and who loves learning about space sciences, and come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye. And notice how after this collision, a lot of these particles are going to be landing all over the planet. Some of them will actually even end up on the opposite side, and that's essentially what caused a lot of forests to start burning. And burning forests probably also added a lot of other elements into the atmosphere, really kind of sealing the deal for the demise of dinosaurs.